Hello everybody, I'm the Shark Damon John and today we're talking business. All right, welcome everybody. My name is Damon John, and I am here today with Zephyrine Hansen of Hampton Farms. And uh, speaking to her about Hampton Farms, and what first drew me and my attention to it is, uh, you know, her amazing work. First of all, she she served this country, and she is a veteran. And thank you for your service. But uh, you also found other ways to serve us and serve underrepresented markets such as uh, farmers. And when I realized I was listening and, and, and reading your bio and you were finding that a lot of farmers were not getting all their goods sold and a lot of those goods had to be thrown away. Now that that is fascinating. And you decided to uh, do a program uh, where you get these farmers to be able to get rid of their goods, sell their goods and you help them with a lot of marketing and various other things. But can you tell us about Hampton Farms? How did you come up with the idea uh, and all the details that I didn't share in there that eloquently because it's really your world? First of all, thank you so much, Damon. Uh, Hampton Farms is a manifestation of my mental health and wellness journey. I got into farming through a veterans program and I started to see that every farmer just needed a tiny bit more help to do what they wanted to do in farming. And they needed someone to sell more of their products. Hampton Farms connected all the things that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about entrepreneurship, serving, uh, even herbalism. I'm a part of several farm, farm organizations here in Denver, and that's where I find my farm customers. What I do is a subscription model. I am currently making boxes and I source everything from other farmers. And I am, I also have a partnership with uh, Denver Botanic Gardens where I harvest their lavender. And that came about because they only grew the lavender for their lavender festival. They did not have a distribution plan or anything that they saw it being worth after that. And so they have allowed me to try this feasibility, profitability study out um, by I'm harvesting their, their lavender and then I distribute it. And what I now do is I collaborate with other farmers with their products. Uh, sometimes it's other, you know, fresh cut flowers, herbs, vegetables, um, value added products, something like lavender put into an eye pillow. So that's where I find my first customer is these farm organizations. Then I help them strengthen their relationship with the customers they already have. Okay, so the subscription model, I pay a certain amount. So so explain that a little. What do I get for the su subscription model? Uh, monthly, quarterly, seasonally? You get weekly during the oh, season. Oh, very good. Yes, during the season, you get weekly. In my box, since it's an experience, you may get a dried good, you may get a recipe. It comes with a class online, like we have one with microgreens. So you'll get a video of me and another farmer um, talking about their microgreens, and there'll be a set in there of how to grow your own microgreens. You have locally sourced unsold farm uh, pro produce grown by underrepresented farmers in the Denver metro area. Now. What was happening? Were you finding that they had too much inventory? They didn't have enough sales? Distribution, Damon. That was the problem. Farmers typically go to farmer's markets and what they don't sell at the farmer's market, they have to bring back. And either they give it away, um, which really does hurt farmers. They give a lot away already, but if you don't sell what you plan to sell at the farmer's market. And so that what I realized is if I could pick it up for you, at the farmer's market, you didn't have to worry about it. The other was a different distribution model. Because of the pandemic, people became open to delivery. So partnering with farmers that had delivery systems already or distribution systems is where I saw real strength. Okay, but you also helped them with marketing as well. Correct. Um, and as a farmer, if I go into the subscription model, does the end user say, wow, you know, this was a sample or something that I had this uh, week and I want to go buy more from them. Uh, how do I find them? Do they find them through you? Do they go directly to them? I'm just trying to understand how it helps them also with a longer tail on their business. Absolutely. 
they can go through me, but the biggest push is for um, them to go through that farmer. While I've curated a box from five farms, you now know who those farmers are. Uh, and so then they can sell from their, their uh, websites or they can sell from their actual front yard farm stands. Now, as I was uh, researching, you, uh, you know, you've been very open about the fact that you uh, happen to learn different. You have a, a learning uh, difference. Um, can you explain what that is and how do you feel that's helped you uh, become more successful in business? It became more helpful to me once I accepted it. Um, but I found out later in life that I had ADHD. Uh, we have three children who all are considered to be on the spectrum of learning differently. And once I got them tested, it's when I realized like, oh, that I have those challenges. Um, my mind moves really quickly. So I have to write things down and I have to have trusted people around me. Uh, to talk about my next steps. The superpower of ADHD is that I think really fast and I'm able to see opportunities or ways in that other people may not be able to see. Okay. And you decided to go into this new area. You had to build relationships. And I think relationships are key, um, you know, in any business you're currently in or any place you want to go, not only business, but community and various other things. So can you explain to us about the best way you went about building relationships? I gave first. That's how I built these relationships. I went to the Veterans to Farmers program and I saw that there were crops, um, at Denver Botanic Gardens Farm. And I said, I wanna do something with this. And so they said, sure. And it was sweat equity. It was, we didn't really know, I'll be honest, there wasn't really a contract at first. I just showed up and um, did the work, asked the questions, learned. Uh, when it comes to these underserved farms, I just go and volunteer. They don't always need to hear, matter of fact, they don't usually need to hear anything I have to say. I just wanna listen and then when I can help, that's when I, I open my mouth. But most of it's just showing up and and being willing to do the work other people don't see as valuable. So that's how I've really built those relationships. Well, excellent. So I obviously want to acknowledge Chase for this great platform and bringing us together. But I'm interested in how you have worked with Chase. What products have you used, you know, within, you know, their offering as well? Well, um, I'm a Chase business com customer. Uh, I use their credit card, which is very important because recently um, I had a vendor not take care of the services they promised and I called Chase and they took care of that for me. And I was very appreciative that I used my credit card to get my money back. <laughs> and then uh, our three children have Chase accounts. Like this is not only do I want to feed people and help people have wellness and mental health. Uh, but this is legacy for me. Uh, often children with a diagnosis have like a 90% chance of never being hired. And so I'm not even gonna play that game. I'm building a company for them right now. And so I talk to them every day about money and what it costs for myself and, you know, my husband to build this business with them and and all the things they love to uh, purchase. They're really into Legos and not the inexpensive Legos, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, you know, they, they need a job for these Legos. So that is something that I use. And how, and how old are they? Our oldest son is 12, uh, almost 13 in August. And then we have twin daughters, Cora and Kayla, uh, who just turned 11. And the oh. three of us share the same birthday. So it's a pretty big deal in our house. That's a great age. That's a great age. So uh, listen, I've, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, asking you all the questions. Are there anything, any questions you have for me that hopefully I can give you some help with or insight on? Absolutely, Damon. I want to be able to scale this subscription you know, in a box model uh, to the fact that, to the point, you know, where I am covering our family's expenses and I have a contract to do it now. Um, I need to do that well and really show them that not only to myself, but the company that has believed in me and, and um, awarded us this contract. And so I'm struggling, I had to do a, I charged a hill and I realized I was going the wrong direction. And so I'm turning now. How do I 
I guess, make up this time if I've got to make my orders. Fulfilling it, meaning making sure you have enough product to put into the order? Correct. Yes. The product and like the things that come with it, like little pins or, you know, t-shirts, the the um, non-perishable things that go with it. And then even just getting uh, boxes and farm supplies or have been since last year, even though I ordered early, um, harder to get a hold of. But I would say there's a good, you would probably say 60% of most people that have products and services and a lot of other things did not move just like the farmers didn't and understand where the world was shifting because they had a lot of things to do and they didn't understand the value of it. It's the same thing when it comes to people who are, uh, you know, they're, they have pens and they have shirts and everything else. They buy a minimum amount of goods from wherever they buy them from. They have to bring them into their warehouse and they have to hope that they sell. But all of a sudden the world just imploded. And if they didn't have a social media conversion or understand email and and Google and pay-per-click and all that other stuff, they're sitting on a lot of inventory. So there's a lot of people sitting on a lot of inventory. If you just walk down Main Street where you know, potentially 40% of the stores are closed if they're uh, people of color and about 20% uh, if they're not, they're, they, got a, they got back offices and warehouses full of inventory that they can't move. So uh, these are a lot of the places you're gonna have to source. So it, it just reminds me of exactly what you did to the farm for the farmers. You're just doing it for other people. Thank you, Damon. I have no other questions, just absolute gratitude uh, for this moment and for your honesty about how you've learned and how you've built this business. Um, it has, if this day never happened, you had already changed my life. And I want you to know that that's, that is not, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm genuinely grateful. So thank you. Well, thank you. I really, truly appreciate you. Um, and uh, thank you, Chase for Business, for having, giving us both this opportunity to connect. I mean, we connect in so many ways. Thank you so much for serving our country, uh, you know, and uh, thank you for uh, being very vocal about your learning differences. Like I have dyslexia, I am very, very vocal about it and showing people how you could be an entrepreneur, a parent, you know, a veteran, a teacher, uh, and keep investing in yourself because small businesses is the backbone of this country. And um, especially being a woman founder and a woman of color, I think there's a lot of people that are gonna be inspired by this conversation. Thank you.